Hello, I'm Professor John Kelly and this is the Weber Auto YouTube channel. Today we are going to look at the Tesla Model 3 rear and front motors and the equivalents that go in the Tesla Model Y also. But let's begin with the rear motor for the Tesla Model 3. Now, as I've been exploring these different motors and drive units uh, on the Model 3 and reading about the Model Y, uh, motors. Um, I've found some interesting things that I, I think you'll get a kick out of. So let's let's take a look at these. First, the the rear motor for the Tesla Model 3, um, as you may have seen in some other videos, uses a permanent magnet-based rotor. In, in other words, there's magnets inside of this. It's called an internal permanent magnet rotor. And this rotor has a, a shaft that goes all the way through. Uh, this has some splines right here that hook to an input shaft that is going to drive some other gears to make the vehicle move down the road. We've got some nice SKF bearings right here and bearing on the other side. Um, I'm going to put this rotor and input shaft into a mock-up uh, that me and uh, my shop assistant built and Let's take a look at how this thing is connected together and then we'll talk about what's common between all of these motors. So let me get this motor put in place first. Okay, as you can see, I've got it placed in some V-blocks here and it, we can just spin the, the rotor in the V-blocks on its magnets. Uh, these these bearings that it's spinning on are not ceramic bearings. These these are some high quality uh, SKF bearings uh, made for high RPM because this motor also spins at a very high RPM, uh, close to 19,000 RPM at its maximum vehicle speed on the performance version of the Model 3. But let's take a look at the other uh, gears and components involved here. So this gear that we have right here that's on the input shaft has 31 teeth and it is going to drive another gear here on this counter shaft that has 81 teeth. So if we run that over here, put it right down in its V-block, get the gears lined up. We have 31 teeth driving 81 teeth, and that gives us a gear ratio between those two of 2.6129. And the counter shaft has another gear, a smaller gear, that has 24 teeth on it. And it is going to drive our great big ring gear right here. This ring gear is the same diameter as the Model S ring gear that we looked at in previous uh, videos, 213 millimeters. It's a little bit wider than the front ring gear that used to be 40 millimeters on the Model S. This one is 46. Uh, the rear one was 50, I believe. So it's the same diameter, just a little bit narrower than the gear on the rear of the Model S. And it uses these same gigantic bearings that the Model S used to handle all of the torque that is supplied to this differential case. Uh, the ring gear is held on with 16 bolts, just like the other Model S's. This has an open differential style uh, differential. And so, so now we are going to set this differential case uh, with the ring gear, with its 83 teeth, down into the V-blocks. Right there. So now we have the 24 teeth of the counter gear driving the 83 teeth of the ring gear and that gives it a gear ratio of 3.4583 to 1 between the counter shaft and the ring gear. And then if we do an overall gear ratio between the electric motor shaft, the input shaft, the counter gear, the small gear on the counter gear and the, the ring gear on the differential there we end up with an overall gear ratio of 9.0363 to 1. Now I noticed 
in the owner's manual and on Tesla's website for the Model 3 and the Model Y. They just list this as a 9 to 1 gear ratio, but it's not 9 to 1. That would be a hunting gear set. We want a non-hunting gear set. We don't want the same teeth coming in contact every nine revolutions. So we have a gear ratio of 9.0363 to 1. So now that means that I have to rotate this permanent magnet rotor 9.0363 rotations to get one revolution of our ring gear. Now the ring gear has side gears that connect to it and that is where our axle CV shafts, our half shafts, come in. Okay, the way I have this facing, uh, this would be the rear of the car, this would be the front of the car. And the, once again, as I spin the electric motor rotor, the permanent magnet rotor, 9.0363 times, our CV half shafts turn our hub and bearing assemblies and our tire and wheel assemblies one revolution. So this motor spins a little over nine times faster than your tires. Okay, these are all the moving parts that are inside of the uh, Tesla Model 3 rear drive unit, the rear electric motor. Um, this is, as I mentioned, a permanent magnet rotor. So I have a permanent magnet right here a neodymium magnet from a Toyota uh, hybrid electric rotor. And I just want to show you, I'm holding it here in my hand, that if I bring that magnet anywhere near this rotor for the Tesla, uh, I can make the Tesla rotor rotate just moving the magnet back and forth. These are very strong magnets. Also, kind of an interesting uh, demonstration here, if we, if you watch this magnet in my hand right here, if I turn, change directions, then it goes the other direction. And that's because of all the different sets of magnetic poles that are in here. This is not an induction motor like they use in the front of the Model 3 and Model Y uh, vehicles. So. This is a permanent magnet based electric motor. And there's some really cool videos on how the, the design of this works and, and how the permanent magnets are uh, aligned with other pieces of the rotor itself. But that, and which is very impressive, but check this out. What I think is really cool about the overall design of the front and rear uh, drive units for the Tesla Model 3 and, and Model S is that they are actually modular, meaning we can, you can change just a few pieces and make it a different uh, motor. So if I take out this permanent magnet rotor right now, so I'm just going to lift it out. It's, it's, it's pretty heavy. I'm going to take off the input shaft and I'm just going to set this rotor very carefully off to the side over here and now we're going to change this entire unit to the front drive unit. So to change this to the front drive unit I need to bring in a different rotor. This is a copper core induction motor rotor and we're going to take that exact same input shaft that slid on to the end of our permanent magnet rotor over here for the rear drive unit and we'll slide it right on to the induction motor for the front drive unit and watch this. Set that right up in there. Align the bearings. And now we have the front electric motor, the front drive unit. All the other parts are the same. <laughs> How cool is that? The, the exact same part numbers, I, I've, I've checked them all out. I've got both a, a front and a rear drive unit apart on the benches uh, over here behind the camera. 
and they have the exact same parts inside of them. So for manufacturing and, and uh, costs, that, that's a really cool idea because it uses all these common components. You don't have to produce all, all these other components for different uh, designs of axles. Uh, we have the exact same gear ratio on the front, exact same number of gear teeth, exact same bearings. It's all the same internal pieces. We have the same oil pump, the same oil filter, the same oil cooler. The only thing that has to be different with the change in the rotor is a change in the inverter and the stator, the, the part, the big three-phase stator that the rotor uh, slides into. So there are different uh, power ratings for different electric motors on the Model 3. You can get um, a rear-wheel drive only, which is the permanent magnet one. You can get a standard all-wheel drive, which is the permanent magnet in the rear and the induction motor in the front. You can get a performance all-wheel drive that has the permanent magnet in the rear and the induction motor in the front, but at higher power. The, the, in, the internal guts are the same, but the inverter and the stator either give it more power or not. The inverter and the stator are a matched set. Uh, by the way, I'll bring in the permanent magnet again from the, the rotor of a, a Toyota a Prius and notice that it has no effect whatsoever on this rotor for the, the induction rotor for the front motor on the, on the Model 3 and the Model Y. And then what's really cool is I was watching a video from uh, Sandy Monroe several months ago about the Tesla Model Y front motor and he pointed out a, even a different rotor for the Model Y that did not have a copper core, it had an aluminum core. And so there are at least three different rotors for this same gear combination here, which uh, I suspect the aluminum uh, rotor, the aluminum is, is not as good of a conductor as copper is. Um, so that's probably the standard uh, non-performance version front rotor and, and possibly the copper one is for the performance one only. I don't know for sure, but I, that's, what I, that's what I suspect. So that's, that's pretty cool. The common components of the rear motor, the front motor for the Tesla Model 3 and the Model Y. The part numbers for all of these motors in the Model 3 and the Model Y are identical for the rear motors. Uh, I can't find the part number of the front motor for the Model Y, the drive unit. Um, I, but I suspect from looking at the outside of the case that it's, it's, uh, it's the same as what we've got here. It just has that different uh, aluminum rotor. Okay, let's take a look at the rest of the common components that you'll see in the Model 3 and Y rear and front motors. Okay, let's continue with what else is modular. What, can, what is almost interchangeable from one drive unit to the next uh, on, these, on this modular design of these Tesla Model 3 and Model Y drive units. So I have an empty drive unit housing right here. And this drive unit I've taken the gears out of. I, I showed you those uh, in the first part of this video. But what I want you to see is that on this side of the drive unit, there's a big opening for the inverter. And the inverter is the electronics that takes power on these two wires from our high voltage battery, DC power, changes it to AC power, sends it out on these three uh, terminals to these three cables. So in the drive unit, this bolts up right there. And this drive unit inverter bolts onto the side of the drive unit housing. And it has a part number on it, this, this drive unit uh, inverter of 11209700-00-D. Uh, and if you'll notice right here on this 
stator assembly, it has the exact same part number on it. So that means I believe that the inverter and the stator assembly are a matched set to deliver uh, one of three different power and torque ratings available on the Model 3 and the Model Y. Uh, we have the rear wheel drive only version, we have the standard four wheel or all wheel drive version, and then we have the performance all wheel drive version. So there's three different sets of inverters and stator assemblies is my theory. Uh, I've been able to find uh, photographs on eBay of parts for sale from those different models and there are a whole bunch of different variations of these uh, over the years since 2017 when the Model 3 first came out. Um, so the inverter bolts up here on the one side. Let me take that back off. Uh, but let me also go get the front inverter and bring it over. So here's the inverter for the front motor of the Tesla Model 3. And if you look at it, it, it looks just like the one that we just took off uh, and set right over here for the rear motor. But this rear motor is a permanent magnet rotor. The front motor has an induction motor. So the circuit board is a little bit different. Uh, possibly the transistors are different that are used there. But I want you to see that this also bolts up to the exact same bolt pattern <laughs> on the on the rear motor. So I'm not saying that you can swap uh, parts around. I'm just saying for Tesla, for the design, to just have one size of casting, one size of circuit board, um, it's and, and make it all interchangeable. Uh, if you want to, maybe if you wanted to switch from a standard range to a higher power uh, version, you could swap out the inverter uh, and the stator assembly uh, and make and rotor and, and make that happen and leave all of the internal gears as we saw, they're the same from model to model. All right, if we turn this drive unit housing around, we have this big round opening here. That round opening here is for our stator assembly. We have our three phase cables right here. They are going to go into these three holes right here. This bolt pattern uh, lines right up. There's a gas or aluminum gasket that goes on there and bolts this and these three phase cables to the three copper terminals on the inverter. There's an access plug right here, this orange plug on the side that is the bolts that connects the three phase cables to the inverter. Um, so if you ever took an inverter off or a rotor or a stator off, you would have to first take this cover off and take the bolts out so that we can separate the, separate the two. All right, um, this stator is oil cooled. This takes a special um, ATF9, it's kind of a purple colored transmission fluid. Uh, there is no coolant running through this transmission. It's all oil cooled. And then it has a heat exchanger right here that this is the exact same part number heat exchanger that's on the front uh, drive unit. This is the rear drive unit. But we have the transmission fluid pumped through the bottom here. We have coolant coming in uh, the top here and it exchange, exchanges heat uh, to cool or warm uh, the transmission fluid. Down here at the bottom of the housing, we have a place for a variable speed electric oil pump that fits in here. What's nice about the variable speed oil pump is that we're not reliant on a gear driven oil pump like we were on the Model S versions. Uh, on the Model S, uh, the, the rotor bearings uh, and all of the input shaft bearings had to be kept cool uh, and well lubricated, especially at the higher RPMs, at the higher vehicle speeds. And that didn't happen until the uh, vehicle speed was higher to drive that oil pump faster. Well, on, 
on the Model 3, we have a variable speed electric oil pump that can pump coolant, or the, the transmission fluid, which is the coolant in this case, uh, through the bearings, and not only that, through the stator to, to help cool the stator, because it's, it's the transmission fluid that cools the, the stator assembly here. And so that is a huge advantage over a, just a gear-driven uh, oil pump. And then we also have an oil filter, an external filter, uh, that screws on uh, right here. And if there was ever a failure of, of any type, uh, you could flush it out and, and change the filter. So we have the exact same part number for the oil pump and the oil filter and the heat exchanger for the rear motor as we do the front motor, the front drive unit. So a lot of common uh, parts, the modular components that make up the differences or make up the commonality between these. Now the differences are uh, the cases themselves. These housings here are different. And the main reason for that is in the back of the car, the oil pump always sits at the lowest spot uh, the, of horizontal so that the fluid, the transmission fluid, will go into the pump and then be pumped around. And the, the, the housing is pretty much parallel with the ground on the rear uh, drive unit. But on the front, it, it, it's tilted. It's kind of tilted like this. And so as you'll see when we get over there, the oil pump is moved over to a different location. Uh, and so these housings are not interchangeable, but the bolt pattern for the inverter and the motor uh, are, are the same. The bolt pattern for the, uh, the heat exchanger is the same, and the, the oil filter and the, the oil pump. All right, let's look at the front drive unit next. Okay, on our front drive unit, you can see the oil pump housing with the, with the transmission, house, transmission housing mounted about like this, pointing down in the vehicle. The oil pump is now at, towards the bottom with our oil spin-on oil filter uh, next to it. So that's uh, different than the rear, but it's, it's still the exact same part numbers. These axle uh, seals are the same part number. Here's our heat exchanger for the transmission fluid uh, going through to get cooled. And then if we come over here and look at the rotor, or the stator, notice this stator is considerably shorter than the rear, rear one, and that's because the rotor isn't as, as long as the permanent magnet rotor on the, uh, the rear motor uh, either. But this is an induction motor uh, stator assembly right here. And then here is our inverter for the front motor. The inverter is also liquid cooled, has coolant uh, with a coolant inlet and outlet over here. There's a coolant passage that goes through to cool the, uh, either the MOSFETs or the IGBT uh, transistors in there that run the current through the stator assembly here. Uh, this rear, or I'm sorry, this front stator will not bolt up to the rear housing. Even though the bolt pattern is the same, the clocking, the position of these three phase cables is different on the front than it is on the rear, and so they are not uh, interchangeable. And the reason for that is the placement of the stator and the cooling uh, drain and feed uh, versus the inverter with the transmission housing tilted has to be different than on the, the front one. But I want you to see that the part number here for this stator, or, or this stator, yeah, is 1120960-00-F, and then it has its matching part number right here. It's upside down, but... Uh, on the stator or the inverter assembly. So once again, these are a matched set. 
these bolt together just like this. And it's my theory that the different p levels of power and torque uh, come from different combinations of uh, inverters and stators, or maybe just the inverter is what's different and the stators are the same. I just don't know. But I I wanted to show you what I thought was really cool in these uh, drive units for the Model 3 and Y, front and rear, in, in that they have so many identical parts, which I think is a really cool uh, design. Now I know I did not go through in deep, deep detail on how these um, drive units are, uh, how they work and how the uh, oil flows through them and all that. And I'll do a different video uh, a little bit later showing you the, the internal pieces and the, and the cooling and, and uh, oil passages through the transmission housing and so on. But this is just a, a quick, semi-quick video. For my videos, mine are usually long on the common components on these modular transmissions. So I hope you have uh, enjoyed this uh, video. Um, we do offer through uh, this website here at the bottom of the screen and in the video description uh, additional hybrid and electric vehicle training. We have some online classes and a five-day uh, boot camp that we run four or five times a year. Uh, so if you're interested in additional ed education on hybrid and electric vehicles, you can sign up for that. Um, also, if you feel like you have benefited from uh, this video or my other videos, uh, please consider a donation to the automotive department here at Weber State University. There's a link at the bottom of the video description where you can donate directly to our department to help us uh, obtain more more components and cool things to show you in additional videos in the future. Thank you for watching.